do see that Mordekaiser ban being taken off first. Uh, you really don't need a Mordekaiser in the game anyway. It's fine. You're fine. Nobody wants Mordekaiser. That Fiddlesticks ban, though, that's... That's definitely a good choice. Yeah, we've been seeing several Fiddlesticks bans today. Uh, He's broken. Uh, definitely some agreement upon upon the players in this league uh, on that. Also seeing Zyra and the Yumi, of course, being taken off. Lots of Yumi bans. Uh, I, I more agree personally with that one. Yumi's been quite uh, difficult to deal with, although in, in the last game didn't quite work out for Smug Club. But uh... Yeah, well... Apparently, Yumi doesn't do well in Vietnam, so... <laughs> yes, for anyone who missed the uh, interview with Meowing Cats after the game, uh, after last game, uh, definitely check that out on the VODs uh, or on our YouTube channel once we get those posted in, in the next day or so. Uh, quite an interesting interview. A lot of focus banning out this bottom lane, but they're taking the Sivir rather than the Aphelios, and I feel like that might have been a mistake. Just don't leave Aphelios open. Don't do it. But you know what they did, and uh, Epic Fail Guy is going to be back on this uh, this massive hyper carry. Uh, again, we have seen Epic Fail Guy play at Felios quite effectively before, and we're going to see if he has the, what it takes to do it again. Zaya awesome. is a choice to put up in this bottom lane. She's not considered the strongest ADC there is, but definitely playable. I like the Shaco though. Yeah, Zaya definitely did get some love in the last patch. Her ultimate got a pretty big buff, a uh, huge damage increase on the feathers. So, interesting to see her being played a little bit more now. Thresh also being locked in. Uh, great uh, great combo in that bot lane. Aphelios Thresh, you've been seeing a lot as well. And then we're going to see another attempt at Orn in the top lane. Love the Magic Goat, so glad to see him back on the rift. This looks like a really strong team for Glacial already. But we have a lot of carry potential for apes. Kale being locked in, uh, kind of matching a little bit of the late game team fight that we do see coming out of Glacial Rising Phoenix right now. Uh, obviously, Aphelios super late game, Orn super late game, tanky, good at team fighting. Uh, so I'm good to see the Kale coming in here from apes, uh, but gonna need a little bit more of a, a team fighting comp built around that if they wanna match it as well. Getting rid of that Rakan is a good choice. We don't have a support picked up on Apes yet, and you don't want to leave Rakan around. Not for Azaya. Yeah, for sure. And definitely, I uh, also would go towards making a solid team fight comp uh, for the side of Apes, so I agree 100%. Definitely a solid ban. Uh, also, Vagar ban coming out here. Mid lane hasn't been chosen yet. Also, the poss slight possibility of a team trying to cheese up with a little Vagar support action. That's mostly a Vagar support ban. I, it's what I would suspect looking at this team, but a Nautilus is... Oh, never mind. That's a set. Yeah, a little bit of a possibility we're going to be seeing set support here, because it's probably going to be Kale up in that top lane. Uh, it could so... still be a Kale mid, so there's some possibilities here, but... I do respect a support set. Yeah, and that also is continuing uh, what they need here, getting some sort of tanky front line uh, built around this Kale uh, and Zaya uh, for, to try to match this late game team comp being built from Glacier Rising Phoenix. And I feel like this is a very similar comp that we've seen Glacier Rising Phoenix run before. If I'm not actually mistaken, they may have played these exact four champions in a game yesterday. Uh, I don't believe. It's very familiar. The yeah, I don't believe the Dragon Ball. But yeah, they have. It looks like they've got some comfort picks here. Yeah, definitely a very scary team as well. Uh, rounding the Syndra, rounding off uh, the, the a really solid core there with the Aphelios Thresh Orn, uh, as well as the the Gragas Gragas Jungle coming in here to provide that uh, those good ganks and that explosive AP damage as well. So it looks like they picked up a Pantheon for the mid lane on uh, Apes. That is going to hopefully keep a cap on that Syndra. Outside of that, yeah, we have a front line of Pantheon who can be beefy and a support set. Probably not the strongest set you're going to see, but still a hard champion to kill. Yeah, uh, a little bit more about this Pantheon pick as well. 
definitely going for a little bit more of that early game instead of trying to match this uh, incredible team fight, uh, late game team comp that Glacial Rising Phoenix has been able to put together. Uh, Syndra obviously uh, pretty strong in the early to mid game as well, but uh, does scale into the late game, uh, always able to pop somebody at any moment's notice. But it'll be interesting to see if Lego Jinjago is able to make something happen with his Pantheon pick, because uh, if not, while the new Pantheon does scale a little bit better to the late game than uh, the previous before reworked Pantheon, definitely not the best late game champion. And if you're tr we're trying to match this late game team comp from Glacier Rising, it's going to be hard to do so now. Uh, not the not the most optimal late game team comp. I think it's going to matter a lot how Lego Jinjago builds this Pantheon. But I think late game wise, even though they have the Kale, I think they're going to have a hard time getting through to the back line and getting at the carries of Glacial Phoenix Rising. So that's going to be their biggest challenge. They want to push this game early and maybe Kale can scale up quickly enough. Maybe she can't. That's all on Lost Fox and how Lost Fox does in lane. Yeah, because while Glacial Rising Phoenix does have a really, really strong team fight here, uh, unless Orin gets uh, super ahead, it will be possible for apes to get their strong to potentially get through the front line, uh, as long as Lost Fox and Cory Trevor have uh, some sort of uh, DPS. It's not as long as they haven't like fallen behind in the game and aren't aren't super behind. They should have enough DPS to maybe get through the front line in certain team fights. So definitely not uh, won't have absolutely no chance as you go to the late game, but it'll definitely be an uphill battle for sure. And I'll have to play, now, play around these team fights very, very tenderly. Now, Lago Shinjago should be able to get towards the Aphelios and give Epic Fail Guy a hard time in the team fights if they're playing it right. And you never know where the Shaco is, and you never know which one is the real Shaco. So they might be able to keep the cap on the carries. We'll have to see. It really comes down to what happens on the Rift, but I feel like Glacial Phoenix Rising is probably going to be our champion today. Yeah, I was just about to get into those predictions. You, you're, you're, you're taking Glacier Rising Phoenix for this one. You uh, know, it, it's a it's a wild prediction, but we'll give it a try. I am also going to have to agree with that. I think Glacier Rising Phoenix is probably going to take this, this game down. I really like the comp they've drafted. Uh, on top of that, they look like one of the stronger teams in the league so far. Uh, They've had some pretty tough matches uh, against some of the middle, middle to upper, upper tier teams so far, and they've managed to to, to notch themselves a three and one record. Uh, on the flip side, of that apes together strong has definitely looked like one of the weaker teams in our league. Uh, so you combine that with the fact that the the comp from Glacier Rising looks so super strong, and I think they're also going to take this down for sure. I'll, I'll say twenty four minutes, 25, okay. 25 minutes. I think with their team set up, we're looking at a 26-minute game, maybe 27 on the outside. You want to give that a fellow just enough time to be able to get a couple of items going, and then things start to crumble around him. Well, we do seem to be in a little bit of agreement here, but as you said, that's why these teams do have to play it out on the rift each game. Uh... Anything can happen, as we do see in League of Legends all the time. This guy's taking a cleanse. Definitely showing some respect for uh, lane against the Pantheon. For sure. Definitely. Cleanse is one of those summer spells that uh, provides so much utility in certain situations that uh, it's just so much more valuable than taking like a uh, summer spell like Ignite uh, and stuff like that. So... Definitely good to see if Autumn Sky is able to get good utility out of it in this game. Of course, one of the things that makes Shaco so scary, he's one of the very few champions in the game that just doesn't need Flash. Yeah, Shaco playing that aggressive Smite Ignite in this game. As we also do see two or one, one and a half five point starts. <laughs> Out. No invasions. I'm sure Mono was very sad. 
Tamana would be sad and Brown would be pretty ecstatic. The flippity flops of our caster preferences here. It looks like uh, it looks like uh, Sina did uh, manage to back after dropping a ward and switching over to a uh, Oracle lens. Yep, gets that good uh, early ward down on that dot push. Recalls with enough time to head back. And, uh... Get to his clear. So yeah, definitely going to be an intriguing mid lane to keep an eye on. Uh, as we were talking before, Lego Jinjago uh, opting to pick up this Jin, trying to make something happen in this early game. Uh, trying to play aggressively into the Syndra. Probably going to be pretty good. A pretty good skill matchup. I gotta hope it's if Lego Jinjago can clear waves and get some lane priority maybe he's going to be able to put some pressure on the other lanes because honestly Nubili is going to have a rough time of it he's trying to survive lane not win it also i do have a brief second here to like to give a huge shout out to nilix for that twitch prime Keeping us going here at the Ascendant League series. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Gifted me a sub last week. It was very nice. Yeah, so far, pretty nothing. Not too much going on. CS numbers pretty even across the board. We do see. Senna on the bot side of this map here, trying to pick up the Scuttle. Both junglers now bot side of the map. Skiz not really looking to contest the Scuttle Crab, though. Jago was able to successfully force Autumn Skies out of lane, so we might start to see a little bit of a um, snowball from that sort of aggression. Senna also spotted out here on the bot side by Zylandis. No gank going to be popping off here. We do have Skiz, though, hovering this bot side. Could potentially be looking for a lane gank, but uh, looks like he's just going to opt to go back and clear his Krugs. Uh, meanwhile, mid lane, Autumn Sky is taking lots of damage as soon as he's gotten back to lane. Not much being traded back into Lego, and that's a pretty successful trade there. Being pretty low on mana. He's... Benefiting from some biscuits, but outside of that, he has plenty of health, which is something Autumn Skies keeps running out of. Yeah, and Lego hasn't backed yet either, so while there was a little bit of a lead there, uh, Autumn Skies has been able to pick up the Amplifying Tome. So Lego probably would need to look for a little bit of a reset at some point here, catching some of that CS advantage he's got instead of playing from behind. We had a failed gank in bottom lane, which probably going to start seeing Skiz fall behind in the jungle. Skiz has already had to back once after finishing Wolves, so I'm expecting to see a um, sign up really pull ahead. Yeah, and uh, Sina still got the Ignite available uh, on the Shaco, so... Definitely got some high pressure on any of these lanes if you can get a potential gank off. Uh, super aggressive summoner spell taken. Probably should be looking to get something like that underway. Try to grab an early lead for their team here and start the snowball. Bot lane, though. Lots of action. Nick taking very low. Uh, nice gank there coming in from Skiz, and that will be first blood. They might try and go ahead and turn that into a dragon, but yeah, they're going to... Go for that early dragon. Yeah, Skiz fresh off a reset. Uh, pretty good health bars. Epic fail guys can push out this bot wave and just be absolutely no contest. Also, though, 
Mid lane Lego taking a little bit of trade back there from Autumn Skies. Still has not reset. Uh, stun will be coming through and the roam down from Nobility in the top lane and that will be a second kill picked up here for Glacial Rising Phoenix. Nobility also managed to get a lot of very deep wards in the red jungle. So he, while he might not be winning his lane, he's not far behind and he's definitely getting a lot of pressure on the map. It's not what you expect out of an Orn. Definitely doing a good job up there. Uh, good job all around here from Glacier Rising, honestly. Able to pick up that uh, solid gank into the drag bot side. As well as that kill actually being picked up bot was uh, put onto the Aphelios. So just that much more gold in the pockets of Epic Fail Guy. Uh, that much quicker going to be hitting those Aphelios power spikes. And you already have BF Swords on both bottom laners, but Aphelios also being able to pick up a dagger, showing his CS advantage, showing that what that kill got him. Oh, top lane. Uh, Orn popping his ult onto Lost Fox. Lost Fox looking pretty low here. Does not have ultimate available. Has just used it. Both flashes being expended here. No, Billy taking lots of minion damage, though. Able to dash away. Might be able to get away with this with his life. Who that was close. <laughs> quite close, quite close. Definitely uh, both both champions being used to their limits there. Honestly, I think that might have been a nobility overestimating what he's capable of, overestimating how much damage he had available, and forgetting that a lot of it's not going to land on Kale for at least a couple of seconds. And Senna now able to come up into this topside jungle. Uh, looking to maybe pick off this blue buff. Skiz is in the area. Might be getting here just at the opportune moment to pick this back up. Yeah, Senna forced for this walk away here. Health bar a little bit too low uh, to stay in that position. It was definitely taking too long to clear that ball. And nobility actually looks like he's going to recall here. Oh, maybe not. He's going to stick around. Doesn't want to miss out on this wave. Doesn't got TP available. This is the second time he's done that, and it's starting to get a little bit greedy. It might have been better to just lose that wave rather than risk another dive, but maybe Lost Fox is just a little too low on resources to punish him for it. Yeah, going to work out for him. Uh, Skiz was hovering uh, up here in this topside jungle, so I had a little bit of backup just in case. Oh, bot side, lots of action. Uh, Autumn Skies actually ended up roaming down from mid lane, and Epic Fail Guy... Ends up picking up a second kill uh, onto Nick. Definitely not what you want to be seeing if you are on Apes Together Strong. Oh, look at this damage now coming on to Corey Trevor. Oh, almost actually gets taken out. Honestly, that might be a disappointment for Epic Fell Guy. He expended his ult for that, really tried to get the kill, and did not walk away with it. It doesn't pick up the kill, but it's going to force Corey Trevor to miss out on another wave. Already mounting a pretty substantial CS lead up uh, 30 CS right now, two kills. This Aphelios is going to be a huge problem for Apes Together Strong. Especially in the hands of Epic Fail Guy. But on the top side, Senna is able to pick up this Rift Herald probably. Uh, actually, Nobility might actually catch him out at the last second here. It's quite low on HP. This could be devastating. Oh. Does trigger the boxes, buying him a little bit of time, but he is quite low. Lost Fox able to roam down here. Uh, looks like Lego Jinjago does have priority on the mid lane, and this should be secured by them. Looked pretty safe. Nobility got feared off, and that shit is a good box placement. That said, this Shaco has not been making himself known on the map yet. He is level 6 now, so maybe that will change. We just haven't felt a lot of pressure coming out of the jungle from apes. Yeah, definitely haven't... Uh, hasn't been able to really get any good oppor gank opportunities off. Not sure if that's been too much of the vision control on the side of Glacier Rising, but... Uh, hasn't been able to find himself in the right place at the right time to have much of an impact in this one. He also failed to secure that blue buff earlier, which cost him a lot of time, so 
I don't know. It feels like Skiz is just the one that's playmaking right now. Speaking of Skiz playmaking, Lego Jinjago going in at just the wrong moment here as Skiz is running into the mid lane. And you'd think that this would be a kill, another kill picked up for Glacial Rising, but Skiz now walking just into the wrong direction as Senna is coming in for that counter gang. So it will end up being just a one for one. Good Skiz reaction did, there. Uh, Senna did use an ignite there. Probably an unneeded ignite to uh, secure that kill, but overall, a kill is a kill. Now, uh, Senna looking to use this Rift Herald they picked up on this top side. Uh, maybe looking to take down this turret, if not just pick up a couple plates and make it low. This looks like a pretty easy uh, tower to take. I don't imagine it'll last much longer. It will not quite pick it up here, but uh, quite low. Apes together strong, looking to maybe take down this first turret of the game here in the next minute or so. But the trade-off for that will be that uh, Glacial Rising Phoenix is able to pick up their second Drake, uh, as Senna did show in that top side, dropping that Rift Herald. So uh, good, uh, good initiative on the side of Glacial Rising to to take that trade. That was definitely great map awareness, great pivot. They have control of their lane, and they are using it. Yeah, this Aphelios is going to be absolutely monstrous. Uh, currently, probably already is extremely monstrous, but it's just going to get even worse and worse unless Apes Together Strong is able to do something about it in the next few minutes. Uh... With the set being in the support down there... Oh, meanwhile, mid lane, though... Lego Shinjago going in again on the arms, guys, but just some bad timing as Skiz is there. Nice neg negating of that ult damage there. Oh! Able to snipe him out at the last second, but uh, we'll end up falling to Skiz. And Senna's just showing up a moment too late to help out. Yeah, shows up a little bit too late, but at the end of the day, is a one for one. Could have been worse considering the timing. And nobody is being able to show off just what makes Warren so fantastic. Crafting items up in his lane. Crafting some items, but it's going to take a little bit of poke damage here at the same time. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, Kale is able to be quite so oppressive. Or not quite oppressive, but definitely definitely winning this lane up here into an Orn. I would have thought the early game would have been a little bit more difficult for this champion, but now in a little bit of a bad situation, as Skiz and Arms guys are now up in this top lane, should be dropping here any minute. Does pop the ultimate, but maybe trying to take one with her, but will be hit by that stun from Autumn Skies, uh, putting the kibosh on that. It's a good pivot. They're going to be able to push this out and probably claim some plates for it. The... You need to shut the Kale down. You just can't let Kale free farm for long. Oh, nice job getting that body slam onto Cena. Uh, followed up by the chain CC. Oh, but no, Bailey's sticking around a little bit too long under that turret. Uh, we'll pay for it with his life as well. A little bit of a misplay there. But again, the later this game goes on, uh, it's less and less tilted into the natural favor of apes, uh, as we were talking about a little bit earlier in Champion Select. Uh, so especially with this massive uh, Aphelios uh, down this bot lane, as well as not necessarily too much of a lead on any of the other lanes. Uh, Kale is doing pretty solid up in this top lane for now, but not quite as the positioning that you would have hoped to be in for at this mo point in the game if you were apes. So hopefully for their sakes, I'll be able to find a little bit more of a couple openings and try to make a little bit more happen here this, as we approach the mid game. Well, guys also sitting on somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand more gold than anyone else on the map. So he's definitely carrying his own. Also an interesting little lane swap here. 
the top turret has fallen for Glacier Rising Phoenix. They do send their bot lane up top. Uh, nice flash from Silanus, though, maybe to catch out Lost Fox. Uh, Epic Dale guy able to just take that lantern and make quick work of him. So it looks I like mean, this just, rotate will be working out for him. Just building that lead, it'll be a safer place for Nobility to farm up. So, yeah, it's a reasonable switch. Be interesting to see if. Uh, oh, meanwhile, also bot lane more action going on. Senna doing a little bit of a uh, annoying onto nobility, but not much can come out of that. Meanwhile, real action is topside as the second rift herald is taken up by glacial rising phoenix. I will be in immediately dropping a mid lane here. Members from ape aren't quite in position to defend this as this turret should surely be falling. This is a great rotation on everyone's part. You had. You had bottom come in, make a big play at top, take that Oh, that exploding and... keg doing massive damage, separating the teams of Ape. But the members are there to follow up and defend them. This fight is spread out so far. Uh, no, Billy doing lots of damage, though, as well as Autumn Skies on the Syndra. And Apes together doing a little bit too much there, walking a little bit too far forward on that counter engage. Oh, they did not have Lost Fox for that, and it was felt they also Corey Trevor gets out alive as well but they just didn't have the damage to stop anyone but prior to that you saw this rotation of bottom lane going to top making the play clearing the tower immediately moving to grab Shelly immediately rotating with the full team to clear mid tower they're moving together uh, rising Phoenix Glacier is now playing every lane together perfectly yeah, and Lost Fox getting caught out once again here in this mid lane. Definitely not what you need to have happen if you are apes here. Need to keep this scale on the map, getting XP, getting gold. Uh, trying to scale up to build a match. Uh, the, the lead, the Glacial Rising Phoenix, has been able to mount as well as their late game capabilities. We've also seen Autumn Skies be able to be much more impactful in these these team fights and skirmishes that we've had uh, up to this point uh, definitely being having much more impact than uh, than this Jin or not Jin uh, excuse me uh, Pantheon Logo Jago has not been using the sheer mobility of his champion to the greatest extent it's unfortunate he should be in more places but also finding himself caught out here in this bot side river negating lots of damage here but should be falling shortly after that elapses uh, another kill. This game has quickly just kind of slipped through the fingers of apes as we do find themselves uh, just about a, over 7,000 gold lead, or just shy of 7,000 gold lead. Also, another stun coming through from Autumn Skies. Great job there to pick off Nick. Uh, it's kind of turning into open season here for Glacial Rising. And you look at itemization, most people have completed at least one item. Epic Fail Guy already has a Randowins and an Infinity Edge. That's going to show... That's the kind of power spike that you just can't overcome. Yeah, already working on that third item here at 19 minutes. Uh, also, so much gold onto Autumn Skies here on the Syndra. Nobility absolutely monstrous on this Orn right here. And that's also one thing that Apes really needed to keep from happening, is having Orn get huge uh, early on in this game, because that's just... So much more of a front line you got to get through, especially if you're playing from behind. Uh, Corey Trevor and Lost Fox really won't have the damage to, to shred through nobility uh, as he's diving in the face of their team quick enough. Especially with his first item being an Essence Reaver. It's a great item, but you're not going to be able to shred through this incredibly tanky line. Just uh, just over two minutes now on this fourth Drake of the game. Uh, speaking of that tanky line, could get a little bit more tanky if Glacial Rising is able to pick up this Mountain Soul here in the next few minutes. But currently hovering around this Baron objective, keeping priority on it. Maybe looking for a pick. Hook lands onto Nick. A little bit far forward as Zylandis, but looks like the damage will be coming through as Senna drops very low. Epic Bill got putting out all kinds of damage here, dropping Nick down. 
Zylanus misses that hook for the continuation of this fight, but that will be one kill picked up. Oh, on the back line, Lost Fox now somewhere he really does not want to be. Not Lost really Fox sure how he ended up getting there, but... He was just in the wrong place. That was not where Kale needs to be hiding out. Yeah, that's two this members is pretty down. much a free Baron. Uh, we see Pantheon holding into the Baron pit, trying to make some sort of last-ditch desperation play, but... Surely will be falling here. Does actually manage to reset the Baron a little bit, but probably won't end up meaning much as they're able to just start it right back up. Some pretty long death timers at this point in the game. So, yeah, this is... That was probably a little reckless. <laughs> the takedown speed on is, here. is starting to drop, though. Santa in the pit. They do know they have halted the damage coming through, but it's getting a little bit lower. Not quite going to get low enough in time as he will be falling, but Autumn Sky is also taken down there. Lost Fox got a pretty good pick there, but not quite enough. Oh, nice flash body slam coming in from Skiz. Nice exploding cake also to get Nick out of position. Able to use his own flash, though, to probably get out of the situation. Although Ghost being popped here... Maybe you able to dive this turret. Legendary epic fail guy. Unbelievable. As they are just completely diving this turret at this point. Uh, Lego and Jago sure to fall as well. Only question is can he get epic fail guy before and he cannot. You know, uh, an 11 and 1105 epic fail guy, that's probably going to be what uh, wins this game. Not to we say that this yeah. game isn't pretty close to over already. Yeah, about 10,000 gold lead. Uh... Absolute destructive performance all around, really, from Glacier Rising Phoenix. Uh, we do have that nice flashy stat line on Epic Fail Guy, 11 and 0 and 5. We have seen some very, very dominating Aphelios performances in the ALS. At this point, I think if you are playing red and you do not ban Aphelios, you're probably making a mistake. <laughs> it seems that way against most teams, honestly. Very high priority pick, seemed very effective. Uh, but this is the sole point now we are seeing on the streak. Apes trying to get there in time with the priority, but teleport coming in. They just gave it ability. up. They're not going to try and. Oh. Way oh to go, my goodness. I didn't even realize what happened there. I almost just assumed that. Uh, that it was conceded and Glacial Rising Phoenix was going to take down that soul, but that was a nice little steal there to delay uh, delay the mountain soul coming through from Glacial. It was cute. I liked it. It's it's gutsy. Orn ult will be landing on the Lost Fox despite the flash being popped, and I don't think that Dragon Steel is going to matter much. I think the game is probably going to end right here. And Lost Fox, unfortunately, also died with ult up. That's never a good feeling for Kale. Yeah, only two members uh, left up here. Senna spawning in right about now, but I'm not sure it's going to do much of anything. There's just way too much gold on the side of Glacial. Lego trying to do something last minute, uh, but will end up dying in his fountain. Glacial Rising Phoenix just kind of padding their stat lines here at this point. Corey Trevor getting absolutely chunked out by Epic Fail Guy. Another kill in the fountain for Epic Fail Guy. This is ridiculous. They're just pulling them out so that they can pad stat lines. Another pull out from Thresh. Triple kill out for Epic Fail Guy. Can they get the Quadra hook lands? But it's too late. The game is now over. Wow. Wow, 24 minutes. 25. Was it 25? 24 or 41. It's pretty damn close. I was, uh, I was pretty on point there. That's, uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. But uh, definitely an absolutely dominating performance in Glacial Rising Phoenix. It felt like, at least for me, the, the early stages of that game were pretty close. Uh, Kale, or Lost Fox rather, was pretty, uh, even a little bit ahead on this Kale. Definitely. That early game was definitely in the favor of Lost Fox. Lego Jinja was managing to put a lot of pressure on Autumn Skies in the early game. And then things just started moving out of the way. I think. A lot of it was jungle pressure. Skiz was able to come in and be very effective across the map while Senna was farming in the jungle. 
Yeah. Um, also, the other important thing to note is that in the bot lane, the one thing that was definitely going in the favor of Glacier Rising Phoenix was that Epic Fail Guy was pretty ahead on the Aphelios for most of the early game, especially as you got towards the later stages of the laning phase. So that was really what they did. They When they transitioned that to the top side of the map with the lane swap, they really pick up another kill on the Lost Fox, uh, further delaying any sort of lead that he had up there. And after that, it really just they did a great job of of really just outplaying apes in pretty much every every single way, uh, out rotating, out playing, out team fighting, uh, and that's really when the game started to snowball really quickly. Yeah, it was that was the move that I think demonstrated the uh, skill disparity here. You see, uh, Phoenix Rising Glacier transitioning their bottom lane and then just doing a line straight down the map clearing objective after objective after objective that was that was a demonstration of what makes them so good yes with this win i believe that does move them to a four and one record uh definitely uh in the upper echelons of our league one of the top teams so far after their third week. Uh, looks like we will potentially be getting an interview with Nobility. Nope. Uh, Epic Fail Guy, excuse me. As I believe he has now just uh, hopped into the chat with us. Epic, how you doing, man? Pretty good after that game, thanks. Yeah, that was definitely a, a dominating performance coming out from you guys. Uh we were a huge fan uh, of, of the draft that you guys managed to pull off here. Definitely a super strong team comp, uh, team fighting comp, especially as you move into the later stages of the game. Uh, is this something that you guys uh, were trying to hope to maybe pull out in the draft, or was it more of like a, a mid-draft decision? Uh, I think we're going into the draft kind of assuming or trying to get a pretty good team fight comp. So, I mean, just allowing the picks that we got to happen was really nice. Yeah, for sure. and. Uh, once again, we've seen you now on Aphelios. We saw you playing him uh, quite well in an earlier game, the split. Uh, is he? Would you say he's your your pocket pick? You you're one of your best champions, or are you just trying to play him for more like the team team style? Um, I mean, Aphelios is one of my kind of favorite champions to play. I just really like his kind of you know his whole kit regarding the different weapons and whatever. And I mean, yeah, like it's just really fun to play. Well, it's really fun to watch you play. <laughs> So uh, every time you lock him down, I feel that was definitely ready for some action. It was definitely a dominating performance. We keep going back to the play y'all made where you transition to top lane after that tower falls and just manage to, as a team, you and Zylandis at first and slowly everyone from the team joins in, clear the, clear the Shelly, have a big team fight in mid, move to Dragon. Y'all's communication is on point, clearly. Do you think that's one of your greatest strengths here? Is that what's driving y'all's success so far? Yeah, we really have been working on kind of better overall team communication and knowing what uh, information needs to be passed on along the team and what information can just kind of be let go. So I think that's kind of what we've been working on in the last couple of weeks, just really kind of sharpen that up and kind of work well as a team. And there's a sh strong showing from Skiz today. The, you know, Grog is going 3 one fourteen and just being all over the map. So clearly your communication with your jungler has been coming through. What, what do you think is the thing that y'all need to work on most now as y'all are clearly one of the top echelon teams in the ALS? Um, I think for us, really, we're kind of focusing on cleaning up our lane fundamentals and just really kind of early game pathing and just kind of uh, voicing to our jungler what can happen and what kind of to prepare for, really, in early game fights and skirmishes. All right. Well, uh, it's a pleasure having you join us here for this interview. Congratulations on picking up your guys' fourth win of the split and uh, good luck to you guys uh, moving forward. Thank you, thank you. All right. Uh, we're going to have to end up taking a short break here once again as we do prepare for the fourth and final game of this week, uh, which will be uh, an absolute potential banger as we will see Julia Duck 
take on NG Blossom. Uh, this has been one of my most uh, anticipated games uh, over the last week or so. I don't know about you, Jeff, but uh, this is going to be an absolute banger, I think. I, I'm looking forward to this. Julia Ducks has really been bringing themselves together. They're coalescing around a strong team, and somebody needs to knock NG Blossom off their pedestal. So let's hope that it can finally be some little ducks. We will have to see if it will happen today. We're going to take a short break here, but don't want to miss this next game. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 